This is BBC One. Stand by, studio. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, okay. Quick, where's the power later? Oh, 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 Well, it doesn't matter. They're going anyway. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Good evening. Um, the two main stories today are the visit of the Fuhrer after 20 years in exile to work out the new format for television news and the retirement of Arthur Powell. Good evening. Just a moment. I'm, I'm reading the news. Now. No news. No, no nine o'clock news. Eight o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Finney. Look, I'm reading the nine o'clock oh, I'm telling you, not really no day. Eight o'clock news and the last news. We go home. You mind leaving? Oh. Very interesting. I still say it's the nine o'clock news. It's no, going to no, stay that no. way. Eight o'clock is better for going home. Oh, you going away? Oh, finish. You do it. Your English is much better than I mine don't. is. What do you mean? What do you mean? Nine o'clock. One. And security. Earlier today, the Führer addressed a huge crowd from the East Tower. Kommt Deutschland und hinter uns! Kommt Deutschland! Marschiert Deutschland und hinter uns! Kommt Deutschland! Later on, a visit to the kitchens. It's John Crowley! Where he met John Crave. Good afternoon, my Harry. On a subsequent visit to the dubbing theatre, he insisted on playing his own music before leaving. No speed, you Austrian weasel! Das dieser Staat und dieses Reich Head of Television News. Good evening. Andrew Todd. Uh, good evening. I have two messages for you tonight. One is, good luck, Arthur. The second is, that, as you know, with the Führer's help, I have been able to work out a new formula for the nine o'clock news. It would not have been possible without his great assistance. But all is not yet well. There is room for improvement. There is room for improvement in both the visuals and the sounds. But the main point I wish to make tonight is that the greatest punch must come in the editing. Ah! Arthur Powell started his career in BBC television at Ealing in the early 1950s, moving to Alexandra Palace in the 60s, where he stayed, despite repeated protests from his fellow workers, until the move to the television centre in 1969. Although working mainly on the sound side of film, in a dubbing crew, he was always looking for something different. That guy's a fool. What do you think of it so far, Polly? Rubbish! Office. Oh, hello, Martin. Yes, just a moment to put you through. Oh, I'm hello? Oh, hello, Martin. I have to look it up for you. Would you hold on, please? Working for the news over a number of years, he made many friends and here are tributes from some of them. I knew Arthur Powell, and look what happened to me. Wouldn't up them people ever Deutsch? <laughs> you lovely thing, you 
you, Mr. Arthur Powell. Uh, six foot four, rotund, uh, good looking, very good looking. Arthur what? This is two frames, never mind half a frame. What do you really think are your chances against this Arthur Powell? Well, I heard about him. I don't know too much about him. All I know is what I heard is about the best fighter now in Europe. And uh, I don't care if it's Joe Frazier again. I don't care if it's Ken Norton, George Foreman. I believe I'll beat anybody. But it's possible this could be the end, meeting him. On occasions, there are technical problems. Well, Arthur, you've made it at last. And I speak on behalf of Dixie and, and Dave, who are not here at the moment, to just, just wish you the very best in your retirement. Little Art. Bye-bye, Little Art. You've been a super chap. Lovely times at AP, and even better times here. I'm just sorry we only had you once a fortnight. Goodbye, Arthur, darling. Have a good retirement, and be a good boy. Oh, hello, Arthur. We, um, we just thought we'd like to wish you and Rosie a very happy retirement. What? Rosie's not... Rosie's the cook. Oh, uh, sorry, Arthur. But, uh, you know, the, I'm sure they told me that Rosie was lunchtime and that, you know, we used to go and play bed. Hi, Arthur. Just looked in to say cheerio. I shall be seeing you again for a little while, I suppose, but I wish you all the very best in your retirement. And uh, don't forget where we live. We're on... Uh, news round now, makeup, so I haven't got too much time. All the best, Art. Cheers now. A very good friend of his from way back in the good old days at Alexander Palace is Barry Deemer. I remember Arthur Powell. Back in the days of Jack Palmer, and Bill Barker, Busby Collins and Les Phillips. Arthur, the grand swinger extraordinaire, gave me my introduction to life at Alexandra Palace. Hello, he said, uh, and then he mizzled off to play billiards with Les Collins and Roy Russell. It was this kindly, paternal guidance which made me what I am today. Whatever I am today, if only I could decide what I am today. But thank you, Arthur, it's been very nice, um, well, something with you. My own personal tribute, pal, old son, is have a bloody good time. You deserve it. See you, mate. Must be step toe. Think it's right into me, Arthur, and I owe it all to you. Eighteen years and he still can't lace it. Uh, this evening came the rather dramatic news that these tests have failed. Uh, I say, do you know Arthur Powell? Uh, excuse me, Arthur who? No, I don't know Arthur Powell. Do you know Arthur Powell? Arthur Powell? No, we don't know Arthur Powell. Hello, what are you up to? Arthur Powell retirement movie. Well, I thought I didn't know it because we met. Did you know Arthur's retiring? Do you mean Donnie's Arthur? I've adored him for Arthur Powell? Of course I know Arthur Powell. Do you mean the brain surgeon? No. 
Who's Arthur Perry? What's David? Ronald Reagan is known to be pleased that Arthur Powell is retiring because he says that when he becomes president, he's not going to keep Henry Kissinger on as Secretary of State and he'll need somebody to fill the job. And Arthur Powell's name is known to be mentioned amongst others. President Ford says at the moment he can't fit Arthur Powell in, but he sends his very best. And Richard Nixon thinks that he may need some new taping equipment installed in San Clemente. And so he too says that he may be able to make use of Arthur Powell. Anyway, all three of those and everybody else in the United States wishes Arthur Powell a very happy retirement, if that's what it actually is. Angela, do you know Arthur Powell? No comment. No, Arthur. Arthur. Oh, Arthur. Arthur, put the light on. Arthur. Oh. Oh, Arthur! Arthur! Mm. Well, if you really want to know the truth, I'm quite glad that Arthur Powell's going. Because ever since I fluffed on News Review, all I've been allowed to do is sweep the corridors. And, and you got another dirty... Quick, where's Arthur Powell? There's another late story for you, sir. Oh, we don't run any film today. Oh, no. What's that? I don't blame you, really. John Craven's news round stories often leave little time for dubbing. They've dropped it. Here at Exeter Crown Court, it's been another day of sensational revelation in the Norman Scott case. Scott has been naming more names, including members of the Hornsey Model Railway Society, the London Cooperative Society, and the BBC's Royal Corps of Dispatch Riders. But a murmur of amazement went round the court when Scott mentioned the name Arthur Powell. Scott said that Powell had entered his life with stories of Nazi regalia. He had boasted of redesigning the news with a man he named as Peter Woods. Scott said that Arthur Powell had planted the seeds of his own moral destruction. Now from Exeter Crown Court, back to the dubbing theatre. Good morning, lads. I'll come to do you now. Clean is still here. I'll have to get Doddy. It is Doddy. He's got another job. There's some funny people about. What do you mean? You wait and see. Alice Deming and the Schweinhunt must nick Deming and our biter. I told you there were some funny people about. Producer Bill Northwood of News Review had this to say. Arthur Verdon Powell. It has a, a fine ring to it. it, it it reminds one of, of, of that great war that we all knew and loved so well, the First World War, with its memories of pack up your troubles, keep the home fires burning, and perhaps sailing by. Yes, I think that's it, sailing by, by Ronald Binge. I think as a fitting remembrance of you, Arthur, what I'll do, as soon as I finish this, because I can't actually do it on BBC time and money and these hard times, is I'll leave here, I'll go into your little cubbyhole in there, I'll take your disc of sailing by and I'll smash it. Excuse me, do you know Arthur Powell? Arthur Powell? Yes, he's washing up. Because he's one of the old originals, isn't he? Oh, any normal, intelligent person knows Arthur Powell.
Arthur, we hear that you, this man used to work for you. Is there any possibility that you would take him back? Best wishes for your retirement. I'd like to point out, though, that we did use film cameras, not these rotten VT things that you see. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Martin? Martin? The BBC's answer to Evil Kniepel. Rejected publicity. Arthur Powell caused many headaches to the former head of television news. Is that all the pension I'm gonna get? Yes, you are. Call the pension! Sometimes he would dress up and add even more confusion to a situation. Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine, in the pale moonshine, a heart's entwined, where she carved her name, and I carved mine, or June, or June, just like the mountains of blue. Incidentally, have you any pause and go for it? Hello, everybody, hello, everybody. Ah. Teddy boy, everybody! Teddy boy! I'm going to come Three. Too. Well, that's it, Arthur. This was your life, or at least the more respectable parts of it, in the Beeb. And we'd like to wish you every happiness in your retirement. And may you never again have to fill the black snake. In fact, I'll do it for you. Oh, my God! Oh, cut to something! C cut to anything! That's better, Arthur.